Alrighty, so recap from last uh, session. You all had uh, headed off to, after uh, getting R2 released into the wild, uh, you followed up on a, a task, if you will, uh, from the Republic for Cade to further investigate the uh, HRD that you had came across a while ago. Um, they had uh, nailed down some information that uh, they were located on, uh, that uh, they traced it back to a, a segment of the Black Sun uh, on Tasper 3, outside on the, I think they're in Outer Rim. And, uh, you know, they didn't have a ton else information, basically just uh, had asked Cade if possible, to go out and uh, see what you can find out, uh, get some information on it, uh, see you know what they're doing with these uh, with this technology and why, and, and report back. So you uh, went about the town, this uh, kind of manufacturing industrial town. We talked uh, at one of the um, main cantinas uh, and tried to get some information and a few locals around town uh, eventually discovering that uh, there was some um, interesting information about uh, a hideout in the base of the mountain uh, and that uh, you know there's there's some group of individuals that uh, come to town every once in a while uh, that might have been your Corey um, and uh, you know they they quote unquote, uh, you know, might have some control over the power plant. Um, there was one gentleman you talked to outside of the power plant, <clears throat> excuse me, a worker that uh, you chatted with a little bit and uh, did say that, you know, there was a, a main uh, Celestin that seemed to be a, you know, key member, but, uh, you know, somebody that I didn't see very often. It was more of like, uh, you know, he saw him coming and going. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing there and, uh, yeah. And then otherwise, uh, you know, the, the heavy smoke emission from the mountains, um, you know, every few days that, um, seemed odd, but, but, uh, all the residents, you know, it was just kind of a, a norm. And so, you know, that's what happened. Uh, going into the base of the mountain, you're met with a couple uh, of these guardsmen and uh, eventually uh, ran back out, tried to draw out uh, as many as you could, uh, then eventually collapsing the entrance of the tunnel here to get in. And uh, with no other way in, you decided to head up uh, along the mountain. Uh, Cade, what was your total uh, speed per round there? Do you remember? Oh man, I don't. <laughs> it was a lot though. <laughs> Like a hundred. It's like a <laughs> after some heavy, infinity. heavy uh, mathematical it's calculations. The, yeah, you know, you know when um, cats are running around the house at like three a.m. It's that speed, it's but up speed, the side yeah. of the mountain. Yeah. Is your uh, lightning bolt on your character for the night speed? I'm trying to remember what I think that that's was for, Robbie, because that was cast on you, right? I think. I think that's what that's for. I didn't think it was for anything else. Yeah, so you guys make it up the mountain to this exhaust uh, hole and drop down inside. Realize that uh, you are inside an incinerator uh, of this, whatever this is, this facility, this hideout deep within the mountain. And then I think, uh, Rix, you opened up the door, cracked it open slightly, uh, and you were able to see uh, at least one guard on the other side, weapon trained uh, towards you. <laughs> that is where, uh, that's where we pick up. So, probably off the bat, we'll uh, get some initiative going and see how this goes. Pretty. Dab, you get the plus five from HK. He's vibing there. Ah. I know. Oh, yeah. It's such a good feature. It really is. I'm so glad I took it. All 
I wish Roll20 would know that if in the browser I'm up to the top of it, it would change the pop-out menu below and instead of above so I don't have to scroll everything around. Ooh, yeah. Just to add a turn. Oh, what did I need? Nice R2. All right, so uh, as we come back into it, we have, uh, yeah, Ricks, you've just peered open. Uh, you're able to see a little bit outside, and uh, yeah, Deb, you're up. Uh, action to uh, activate one of my stims. Bonus action. I'm going to play it safe and just, uh, they haven't, have they noticed this yet? I, uh, you would, th you're not sure, but you know. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to come over here. I don't see anything else. Uh, you coming out then? Cause it, Rick's was in front of the door and he had it cracked open. It wasn't fully open. Oh, he had it cracked open. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, then I am going to come back and I'll just do my, my stim as my action. And as a bonus action, I will um, do nothing and then my turn. Okay. Can you remind me what your uh, stim does again? Uh, the, the adrenal for, uh, yep. speed, so it increases my speed and I think I get like a dex bonus, but that, that's not going to help me. Okay. All right. R2 and HK. All right. HK is going to like move up a little here seeing that, uh, the door is not quite open and R2 is going to give Ricks a potent aptitude which I believe is a D8 question mark. I always forget. <laughs> uh, Probably at your level, it, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's a D8. And uh, that's all for me. Okay, anything from uh, HK? Um, just ready in action to um, blast whoever walks through the door. Slash, well, who... If the door is to open and there's a target on the other side, he'll he'll blast it. Okay. All right, uh, Cade. Before you go, uh, you guys all hear uh, the steady pulse of a some sort of an alarm uh, from inside uh, the incinerator. The steady wow, wow. Yeah, we should go. We should get out of here. <laughs> can I? I is there any way that I can push by Ricks? Get the door open. Um, I, technically, yeah. I mean, it's you know just difficult terrain, you know, to get to get through him. But you could get to the door, yeah. I'll not not that big. Take up all yeah, five I'll, feet. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll get out there if it's difficult. Ricks terrain. is actually it's five feet by five feet. feet. I think. Do you remember Ricks' yeah. last session about the door? Because I. If you were, so I know it was a manual lock. So you right. the. Uh, I think you unlocked it, and then you were just kind of. I, un I, un I unlocked it, and then I cracked it open to see okay. if we could see anything. I think you said that's where we could see yeah. the guy out there. Okay. All right. So yeah, okay. Just you have to pull it open and then uh, go forward. So I can probably make it there without because my movement speed is thirty-five regularly. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll just, I'll just run out, um, whatever. I'm sure that there's more guys out here and I'm going to regret doing that. Oh, that's <laughs> just, just surrounded by like, turrets and <laughs> yeah, that would suck so bad, but better than being instantly incinerated. Nice. All right. There it is. <laughs> I thought, I thought that was coming. Um, well, if I, if I run out here and I see this guy, I'm going to go over here. Okay. And I will, um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna bonus action way of the Acklay. Um, because that's and then I'm just going to attack twice with one of my light foils. All right, uh, a couple swipes out. First one just gets through the armor. Second one definitely does. Go ahead, give me damage. Nice. nice. Okay. Uh, 12 and 8, 20. All right. That, uh, yeah, definitely going to do some damage. Yeah, so I'll, I'll yell, uh, better get out of there, and I will come out. <laughs> and take a couple swipes with this guy. And then that's my turn. All right, Rix. Um, all right. Guess I'll take, cause I assume the door is just like here. I think you're so on here. a wall. Yeah, so, out of he so here is out of the door, right? Like I'm yes. no longer incinerated at this point. Okay. Um, I'm no longer being incinerated at this point. Yes, that's <laughs> goal number one, no longer being incinerated. Okay, I'm going to attack the one that uh, Cade shot. And they have not acted yet, so I actually will get advantage because of my responder's routine. All right, 25 will definitely get through. Right, chuck on some sneak attack. All right, that uh, is enough. Takes it, takes him down. All right, cool. Just, uh, um, starting off uh, already with those stealing kills. <laughs> Classic. That's what, I, that's what I do. The old one finger salute. Um, and then we'll target this guy here with uh, my dual wielding. Which one? Sorry. Uh, the bottom one here. Okay. 24 will hit. And then my final dual wield. 22 will hit. More. All right. And then I will go ahead and use the rest of my movement. Just to move up here and get out of the way of the doorway. All right. So oh, that guy is down. Uh, this oh, is Todd, real quick, yep, real quick, just to clarify, is this just like a painted caution thing on the yeah, it's floor, nothing. or is that a wall? Okay, nope, so it's just nothing. Marking. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, this one in the back here is uh, he is going to let's see. Oops. Uh, pull up his uh, weapon and aim towards you, Cade, uh, first to see. A couple attacks coming in towards you. Uh, wow, a fucking natural three and a natural two. Hey. Uh, and he is also going Thank to uh, call out on a, a small comm unit and just say that, uh, basically call for reinforcements. Uh, going to duck around the corner here. Uh, and here in this uh, individual who looks very different from the others that you've seen uh, is going to step forward and um, step up to Cade and um, go ahead and uh, just reach out with his fists and make uh, three uh, attacks against you. Ooh. I don't love this. Oh, no. The... 15, 18, and a 12. Holy fuck, roll will... 20. 18 will hit. All right. So that's going to come in and be uh, 23 points of kinetic damage. Ooh. And... Right. Mamma mia. Um, 
Give me a strength saving throw, please. All right. Not my specialty, but that's fine. Oh, All right. Uh, DC 13, you are good. So as this, uh, this person comes up and uh, wails on you, only connecting with the one, but uh, then it tries to force you to drop your lightsaber, but you uh, resist that pretty easily. Mm. I don't like this guy already. And that is, uh, yeah, that's its turn. Remy. Remy? You're muted. Yep, that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely have not been talking to myself for the last 20 minutes. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, man, these guys are ignoring everything I say. <laughs> it's like making small comments, and I was like, oh, I guess no one thought that was funny today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to run. Went around here to this guy. Boom. All right, so uh, rushing out of the incinerator, uh, stepping up to this uh, black sun thug in front of you. Couple strikes coming out, 19 and 26 will both hit. And that is uh, plenty to take him down, as he was already uh, beaten, I believe, by Ricks. A couple shots from him earlier. <clears throat> Anything else? If I move, I can't do my bonus action, or can I? What's that? If I was like to move, would I be able to use my bonus action? Oh yeah, there's, those are separate. I mean, if if you still have movement left to get somewhere, but yeah. I mean, you used, it looks like you used about 40. 40, yeah, so I only have five left. Okay, um, I'll just stay here then. And okay. End my turn. All right, that guy is down. Top of the round. Dab, you are up. I'll move in, and then I will cast Drain Life on the guy attacking Cade. And with my new level 8 feet, I can impose disadvantage on his con save. 17. Disadvantage. What's the DC again, sorry? 17. Okay. And I look at the guy and say, no one hurts Cade but me. I was going to say, <laughs> except you, right? That's right. At least it's mostly, mostly emotional, so you know. I call dibs. <laughs> dab dibs. Wait, dib dabs? Dib dabs. Dib dabs. Right. Funny, funny e card. All right. Style. What con save you said? Yes, sir. Nat one. Hey. Ooh. Ouch. As you uh, reach forward, uh, oh, attempting no, to uh, drain the life of this creature. Uh, you see that it does not uh, it, it does not resist the effect, but there is zero effect from the attack. Points well wasted. That's uh, I will have quickened that as my bonus as my regular action. I'll uphold myself with the force, my consular feature, and uh, I let the guys know uh, something's wrong here. Something is very wrong. Mm. Well, Cade and I heard the ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk as he came walking <laughs> <Good> up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Anything else? Nope. Dab? Nope. Hey, R2 and HK. Another one of these god all right, all right. <laughs> You guys can feel, you can see the heating coils uh, warming up, and you can feel them <laughs> slightly starting um, to get out. Pro tip. Get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. The droids, I feel, would probably be able to withstand a little bit more, but still maybe not the best place. Yeah. I mean, you, you can test it. It's, you can certainly test it. <laughs> when the DM says that, don't. <laughs> I know. Let's not, let's not all cluster together either in case there's some AoE stuff happening. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that R2 has that much movement. I, yeah, actually, you're right. I forgot. I'd be right here. HK would be right there. I don't have anywhere else I can go besides, like, taking a dash. <laughs> Translocate. Uh, translocate out of there. At least I'm past the door <laughs> yeah. at this point, but I gotta worry about whatever the hell's going on. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'll stay here, I guess, and um, just ready the droid's actions to shoot. Actually, this guy's still up, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, just making sure. I was like, I don't see any active combatants that I can, like, shoot at. So, okay. Uh, HK is going to take a shot at that guy next to Cade here. Please. Alrighty. 25 will hit. That's max damage. Okay. And then... Uh... We'll have R2 do a Jet of Flame at him as well, just for fun. All right, uh, that goes out, and 14 will miss. Drat. All right, uh, and that's all I got. All right. Cade, just before you hear uh, down the hallway... A door open up. Sounds like somebody is rushing out uh, to join in. It's going to be... Okay, so I need a... Aya? And you are up. Okay. I'm going to lay into this guy. Um, I'm going to do my dual weapon, dual wield fighting, uh, mastery. So one attack without proficiency, one with, and then two without for the bonus action. Hopefully I don't fuck this up. <laughs> you done fucked it up. 17, yeah, 14, 10, and 9. Uh, as you swipe through, the, the your first attack hits, but just something, uh, you, you're just not able to get through, you know, armor or whatever uh, on this enemy before you, and the others, uh, he dodges out of the way uh, of your swipes. Um, I will I will use um, my channel the force to do another attack. Um... I'll do it on the on the uh, second one, the one with proficiency bonus. Come on, <laughs> fifteen will not hit. Come on! All right, that's that's pretty bad. Um, all right, well, I'll roll damage on that one, and I'm gonna do a second level. Um, or I'm gonna spend three points to do, um, three d eight. I believe I can do that. That still matches with Paladin. Let me let me check the book real quick. Oh, wait, no, it's written on my sheet. I'm a dumbass. Yeah, three D eight. Why did it? What? Okay, there's the damage on that, and then which one is that from? That's from the first one. The they head. missed. The Sorry, first they, one missed. They all missed. Yeah. Oh. I I, sorry, I, I said that the 17 was close, but it did not go through. Okay. I, yeah, Man, sorry. well, then never mind. I'll shut up. And uh, that's my turn. <laughs> All righty. Ricks. 
All right. Um, you said we heard a door open down this way towards the end of the hall? Yes. Okay. Uh, give me, actually, give me a perception check. Oh, all right. Don't know why I have guidance turned on, but... Interesting. Uh, <laughs> so you hear, um, you think you hear uh, more than one door uh, that is opened. Okay. Um, all right. Is that everybody I can see? Yeah, yeah, perception. Okay. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Had guidance turned on from previously on accident. Um ah. Yep, I will go ahead and um actually I'm gonna Rangers quarry that guy. We sorry, which one? In front of you? Or yeah, the that one, yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Then I am going to um do some blasting. Nice. At what 20 on? will definitely hit. All right. Now I've got some additional things. So I've got my Ranger's Quarry. Which would I roll that twice? I can't remember how we decided on that. You have all been yeah, the highest. If you, um... right. Oh, wow. Dude, you He's cheating. fucking cheater for <laughs> sure. How? Nat no 20 perception roll, Nat 20 on his attack roll, max damage that on his eight. first damage roll, and, and then two, two Rangers Corey's high damage. That's insane. And I and I managed to miss five attacks. Excellent. Rick, you should go out and buy a lottery ticket. You might, yeah. That's insane. And you got well no, your second one, your one D eight on that one was was not, but still. Holy cow. Yeah, there was only oh, one die in that whole thing that... Oh, my Ranger's cores are only D6s, and sixes. I still have my sneak attack. So let me see if I can get two more D6s. Maybe D20, yeah, they, maybe roll 20 just... 1D8 was a 4, but... Yeah, oh my god. god. Another, one. Another 6, but what? only a 4. <laughs> oh, but I have to crit that too. So, oh, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> just a two. There it is. <laughs> wow. What was the... Oh, wait, that was not right. I did Ranger's Quarry on accident. I'm pretty sure someone, somewhere, just roll one more D6 someone's then. character. There we go. Somewhere in the world, more. someone's character just got murdered <laughs> to make us <laughs> yeah, yeah. seven that was the roll. Insane. Wild. Okay, anything else? Uh, yeah, that was my first attack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. All right, I'm going to go ahead and. I forgot to do my extra attack last time, so I'll go ahead and use my extra attack. <laughs> Fuck off. Another Are nat 20. Me? Wow. <laughs> what? Right now. I quit. I'm out. Oh, no. <laughs> Alright guys, let's go home. We've got this. It's fine. Good night, everybody. It. <laughs> wow. That'll hit. Yeah, roll it. Seven more. Seven. Okay, that's two, There's two that ones one. on the damage, though. <laughs> Alright. Um... Wow. Okay. So I've already, I can't do sneak attack again. I can't do Ranger's Quarry again. Um, so now I'll go into my dual wield here without the uh, proficiency. <laughs> Thank oh, God, it was okay. another 20. <laughs> All right, 19 goes out and uh, does hit uh, with 12 more. I was still like three in a row. Oh, and I think I finally And missed. a 15 on the last shot will finally miss. Throw my... Precision attack on there. If we're flying, Rix, you're piloting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for me. All right. Oh <laughs> so this guy is going to uh, rush up, join the fun, and uh, raise up his wrist uh, down the hall here. And... new like token setting thing I don't know if I'm if I like can you guys see that aura 
Yep. Uh, yes. All right. He will. Yeah, he's going to put it to hit. Uh, get the three of you. Uh, so a uh, a blast uh, of energy comes uh, towards you guys. So everyone in the yellow there, Dab, Remy, and HK, I need a dexterity saving throw, please. Uh, give me one. I will reroll that. <laughs> hey! <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Remy, dexterity save. Oh, that, and keep in mind it is just that. Yep. Okay. So, uh, this blast of energy comes out, uh, lands at your feet, and bursts out towards each of you, and you can feel the coldness of this effect uh, creep onto you, but uh, you are all able to uh, shrug it off, uh, taking six points of cold damage, HK and Dab, and then Remy, as you succeeded, you take uh, no damage. And then uh, that's all he can do there. And then this guy is going to uh, pop out. Uh, he kind of doesn't need to, but he is. And he sees uh, Rick's going ham and is going to uh, pull up his blaster, take a couple of shots at you. All right, well, I think we'll get at least one of them, a 22 and a 12. 22 hits. That will be eight points of energy damage. Okay. Yeah. It's going to rush up towards you and get in your face. Um, actually, okay, um, I'm gonna use my reaction, probably like a second before he moves, Okay. to do, um, the, my element of surprise, so it's a deck save, and it's what, um, he's gotta make a deck save? Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the, um, save is on it, it's usually 8 plus my casting, plus proficiency? What's your uh, casting yeah. modifier? Um, intelligence. So it'd be eight plus two plus proficiency, so thirteen. He is going to succeed or save. Okay. So no effect. Uh, half as much of this two D ten. Just got that somewhere. I thought. Do it the old fashioned way. Use your toolbar. All right, five points. Okay. So he's gonna yeah, just rush forward uh towards you, get up in your face. Uh okay. and then it is the uh figure attacking Cade uh just took a heavy hit and it uh it decides that it needs to eliminate uh this target. Uh so he's going to at disengage as a bonus action from you, Cade, and come to you, Rix, and lay down some hurt. That's annoying. First one coming in. A nat one. Second one, 19 to hit. Third one, 25 to hit. Okay, First attack, 21 points of damage. Second one, 16 points. So 37 total. And uh, 
Uh, give me a constitution saving throw, please. On the nose, uh, the two heavy uh, impacts that this uh, thing makes on you, um, you feel that he, he's kind of hit you in a spot that you, you get woozy and you, you almost feel like you're going to uh, go stunned for a moment, but you're able just enough to shake it out uh, and do that. Um, however, um, unarmed strikes count for sneak attack, correct? It says melee weapon attack. What's the... Ugh. This is my least favorite conversation <laughs> when it comes up on the server. I'm pretty sure, yeah. They generally would, uh, you know, apply as one, right? Yeah, I think it really depends on the specific wording if you really want to get that pedantic, but I don't. Yeah. I run your game. <laughs> I think you can just <laughs> call it good. Sorry, yeah. Rix. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Rix. 19 more points of damage. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Uh, knocks me to zero, exactly. Ooh. Remy, you are up. All right, stepping forward, uh, lashing out with a couple strikes yourself. Uh, the first one will hit, the second one uh, does not. 12 there. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? What's that? Uh, I'm trying to think if I should try. Yeah, we'll do one more as my bonus, and then mm -hmm. try stun. All right, third one goes out, but uh, misses worse than the s second one. Uh, and yeah, is that your turn then? Uh, still do the sudden strike. So I guess I would have done that off the first. Oh, yep, that's fine. I'll right. allow that. So that is again con save. What's the D oh DC fourteen right there in front of my face? I think it's gonna save because it rolled a natural thirteen. Yes, pushes against that. That is, yeah, that's it. All right, Mr. Powers. I fly over to Cade and I say, Cade, pull my finger. I'm going to regret doing this. I'll pull his finger, though. I use my reaction to pull his finger. A large uh, <laughs> stream of lightning just jets out of me. And I'm pretty sure that will catch both of these battos. Yeah. I'm not sure if this one will roll with disadvantage for it being lightning, but uh, yeah. I I'll thought... impose. For one what? second there, I thought that this was the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, deck saves. What's the DC on that, Dab? 17, and the guy in the back will have disadvantage on it. Okay. All right. So, uh, first one up is going to be a... Yeah, of course. Uh, natural two, and then a second guy is gonna save. But roll your damage. Uh, so seventeen for the save. 
And the first guy fails, but you see that he is able to uh, still regardless uh, dodge out and uh, negate some of that damage. All right. That would have been uh, quickened as a bonus. As my regular, I will take the dodge action and I will uh, move myself over here. Okay. My turn. R2. Alrighty. Um, I guess first things first, HK is going to um, shoot the, the guy closest here. Um, one second. There we go. Uh, the one marked, you said? Yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. 22 will hit. Definitely right. uh, starting to show some significant signs of, of wear at this point. All right, cool. Uh, that's all good. And then R2 is going to... Um, who's... Is Rick's down right now? Yes. Yep. All right, cool, yo. I'm going to uh, Colto pack at Rix here. We're doing Yay. that. Um, he's still level two here. All right, eight points to Rix. Uh, that's ten because I ten? Cast it. Oh, I saw that. Okay, yeah. I, I thought the two was something else. All right, very nice. Yep. Um, Rix, you also still have that uh, potent aptitude if you haven't already used it. Oh, yes. Good. Thanks for the reminder. Yep. And then R2 is going to go up here to try to get out of the way. And that is all for me. All right, Cade. All right. I'm going to come down here. Uh, One second, Cade. Sorry. Oh, layer action or, or whatever. Just uh, you, you hear another set of doors and uh, somebody else. Uh, he just rolled a natural 19, which is going to get his... Uh, Initiative up to, yeah, 20. 22 would actually jump ahead, but he's just showing up. Uh, but yeah, it's going to come in to the room and, uh, yeah, just kind of see, uh, go after dad with a couple attacks here. A nat 20 and a 19 to hit. Disadvantage, because Dab took the dodge action. Uh, yeah. OK, so I guess uh, that would cancel a nat 20, right? Yeah. All right, let me re-roll. Well, so it, it's not a nat 20. Then uh, first first attack would hit. Uh, so 10 points of uh, energy damage on the first one. Uh, half of that. Okay. And then uh, 10 on the second one will miss. Cool. And that is uh, his turn. Okay, now you're up, Cade. Okay, I'll come down here to the HRD and I will... Um, um, I will do the same thing that I did earlier and don't hopefully do, do, do it. Do you mean exactly the not the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going to try the same thing I did earlier. All right. Damn it. Yeah. All right. Uh, rushing up, hoping to have better luck. Uh, you swing... Uh, into this thing, striking on your first attack. Second one misses. Third one connects. Fourth one seems to hit uh, spot of the armor and deflected. So you get uh, the 19 and 23 will hit. Okay. I will spend three points to do an extra 3d8 on the first one. So it's 15 plus... Mm -hmm. 15 plus... So 29 points of damage on that first one. And uh, how's he looking at this point? Uh, he will go down. Okay. Well, then this damage is into the wind, I guess. 
or can I can I move down and have this that that uh 23 ow cuz that would have been my first attack I shouldn't have rolled them all at the same time <laughs> Up to you Todd uh no the, sorry the the nine you would have needed the nine to push them, put them over he didn't have a couple I just knew that your extra damage is gonna put them over so okay 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 yeah. makes sense that makes sense anything else from you then um then question would the eighteen because the my third attack would have put him down with the fourth one the eighteen hit this guy would I be able to apply it to that guy yes okay. So that would be and uh, thirteen. Thirteen. And I'll put an extra D eight on that. Uh that puts him down. With the D eight or without? Without. Okay. Never mind then. Alright. That'll be my turn then. Rix is up, right? He is now up, okay. yes. You're prone, but you're up, Rix. Alright. Um Rix will lay on the ground, looks at the dead bodies around him, and wonders what has happened. Um, Not twenty, will... almost dead. Right. <laughs> I will uh, uh, glass cannon, I guess. I will um, bonus action use a med pack on myself, which is a hit die these days, right? Yes. Is it a hit die or two hit die? Med packs? I think it's just one hit die. That's probably right. Thought, yeah. All right. Um, yep. Then. Kind of, kind of like getting back out of range here. We'll move, move back a little bit here. Let's see. And uh, for my regular action, I will attack this guy here with my blaster. Yeah, 11. All righty. That will miss. Yes. Then uh, extra attack. Try once again. Oh, hey. 10 will Still miss. Still feeling, feeling rough after getting shit kicked out of me by a droid. And that will be it for me. All right. I'm to this guy down the hall and is going to... Uh, yeah, cast, cast another uh, blast out towards you guys. So everyone in the yellow, uh, please give me dexterity saving throws. DC 12. All right. Oh, I lost the... Okay, uh, Dab, you will take nine points of cold energy, uh, cold damage, I should say, and you gain one slowed level till the start of your next turn. Uh, the other two, Remy and Cade, you take four points of cold damage, no further effect. One level of slowed is think uh, you your speed is reduced by fifteen feet. Remy, yes, evasion there, so nothing. And that's kinda... that's on a that's on a save. What's that? The slowed level. Oh, he rerolled. Oh. Yeah, I rerolled. Oh. Okay, I didn't hear that you said you were re-rolling, so uh, then you only take four points of cold damage. Okay. All right, he tucks around, and Remy, you're up. Um, uh, Rick, Rick, how are we doing on health? You okay over there? Uh, I've been better, but uh, hanging in there. <laughs> okay. And uh, in that case, I will. Turn up to this guy. Smack him. Oh, if people want to leave like med packs laying around for me like breadcrumbs, <laughs> I'll pick them up and heal myself on the way to catch up. 
I uh, rush for Remy, and uh, the first one uh, impacts into the armor of this thug. No uh, effect there. And the second one, he, he kind of just gets out of the way of your second strike, both of them missing. Okay, well, all right. All right. Uh, reaching in to get a little more out of it, uh, you get at least uh, your third strike out of four to hit with a natural 20. Go ahead and roll damage there. All right, 14 points of damage. Anything else? That is it. Dab. I'm going to fly over to my friend Rick's. I'm going to lay my tiny little nubby hand on him. Use your strong hand. And I'm going to lay my second hand on myself, twinning this. And I'm going to tell Rick's, just breathe, buddy. It's going to be all right. And I heal us both four. I can... No, I can't re-roll that. Um, 18 plus 5 is what? 23? 23? Where Did you say you're upcasting it? Yeah. Okay. Level four. Okay. Oh, sorry. I just missed that. That's why I was like, "Where's the forty-eight come from?" If yeah. I didn't, if I didn't say it, then yes, it's an offcast. Um, I it, it, on my sheet, but uh, I guess I have to say it. So yeah, upcast twinned, twenty-three points, and um, that is. I'm gonna move over here so that we don't keep AOing <laughs> or try not to, and uh, that's it. All right. Uh, wouldn't that's going to go off your? Isn't heal a light side power? Correct. So it would go off your wisdom modifier. Oh yeah, you're right. Which so, is so two, twenty points 20. total. Yeah, yeah, twenty. All right. Anything else? So how many less? Nope. Was that? Minus twenty. three ricks from Minus the original. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I already put it in. Okay. <laughs> so this guy in front of uh, Remy here took uh, took one hit. It's gonna. Retaliate, couple back, stat block. Uh, probably not. Fourteen and a fourteen and a fifteen to hit. So what, you just see what? Remy and this black son's thug just slapping at each other, uh, like little kids on the playground, not really doing much. Uh, R two. Alrighty, um, we're just gonna take some more shots here. I think HJ has got to go up a little bit if he doesn't want to like nail Cade. That's appreciated. Noted. Oh, that's a nice nat one. Nat one, first of the night, I believe. Man, I'm just killing who's, it today. Who's that on? Probably this uh, guy here, I assume, right? Yeah. Yeah, that guy over there. 14 will still miss as well. Well, gosh be darned. Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to do. Um, no, not really. Okay, that's all I got. All righty. One last uh, door opening. And 16. Go ahead, Cade. Coming out of the walls. All right. I will slide over here and do the same thing that I've been doing. Probably miss every single one. <laughs> nice. Also, hey, nice. there we how, go. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> Nine and then a natural one for a ten. Okay. Because uh, yeah, the your modifiers. Yeah, the modifier is different. <laughs> and then finally, your third strike and fourth strike. Go. A twenty-three and a twenty-one <laughs> will both hit. I mean, could be worse. A uh, twenty points. Yeah, twenty points. All right. He is on his very last leg. Right. Oh, and Remy... Wait, did Remy start within five feet of me? No, he did not. Never mind. Yeah. But I get, I get my own two points back. Anything else? 
No, that'll be it. All right, Rix. All right. It's a um, fresh kill, right? Just got your name on it. I know. Take I was me, ready Rix. to Rix, take me. <laughs> we're, we're just take. I don't do hear it. that very. Rix doesn't hear that very often. <laughs> <laughs> um. Are we able to see the part of the, is this guy actually here? Like I don't know if that door's open or not. Um I will say that yes, the doors are open. So uh he has I mean he well He's not really there yet. Okay. He, Fair enough. He's I, like it, at the end here I can reveal I mean if you come yeah, if you're right there, uh he's come through the first set of doors and then he's gonna make uh make his way up. Uh, next. So, yes, you can see him. Okay. Well, actually, no, because that's super metagamey. Because from here, I wouldn't actually be able to see if there's a guy there. I just know yeah, about this from guy. There, just... Yeah, well, well, you was could originally maybe here, but... Yeah, so I'll go ahead and say that I shoot this guy first. All right. And try to steal the kill, potentially, here. It's okay, I stole two. 24 will hit. That'll take him out. One left. All right, so now, knowing that the guy's down, I would... I guess make my way over this direction. Then I guess I would see this guy here. Yep. So I will uh, extra attack on him. 18 will hit. Six. Okay. Then a uh, little dual wield. They probably both miss. Yes, 13 and 7 will miss. All right, that'll do it for me. Okay, and it is this guy's turn uh, that you just took shots at, and he is going to, uh, yeah, trade uh, trade fire with you, shooting between oh, can, Remy and Cave. <laughs> could avoid the two easier targets to try to bullseye me. What a bastard. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a 9 and a 20 to hit. 20 hits. No oh, shot coming in. Will do. 9 points of energy damage. Alrighty. And uh, it's going to finish its move. Uh, and come. Yes. Yeah, no, come actually, it'll stay range. there. <laughs> and then, all right, so then this guy, he's going to pop back out and once again, throw out a blast. Uh, Rick's Cade, and Remy, dexterity saving throw, please. Uh, have we learned nothing? <laughs> Apparently well, <I'm> not. <laughs> I just stood right there. I got God damn. too close. I'm fine. Yeah, 20 okay. for Cade, 19 on Remy. All right, you guys all succeed as the cold energy First out to you, you take six points each. Remy, you're good. Cool. Remy, that's just, uh, you just always get to use that, right? It's not like, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. A, a feature. Passive. Yep, okay. Yep. All right, so yeah, six points to Cade and Rick's cold damage coming in, and then this guy. Um, uh, Cade, Remy, and Rick's. Give me perception checks. I don't know what our roles are today, but whew. yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, you know. so uh, Remy and Cade, you guys, uh, it, it, the guy, he takes off uh, down the hallway. You hear a door open and close behind him, but as he takes off, you hear him mumbling something, uh, and it basically comes out to um, you catch enough that's basically uh, you know we're overrun, uh, need to retreat and evacuate. Retreat to where? I go evacuate. Okay. All right. So, All right. Uh, that comes to Remy. Safe to say he probably closed the door behind him. The door that he went. You would. Yeah. I mean, you heard it close. I guess you know. You, you heard a door kind of open and close. So. These ones below, right below me, are open though, right? Yes. The ones, okay. the ones to the the farthest south, those are closed. Um. Oh God. Uh, 
Ah, I keep forgetting that potent aptitude. I'm going to use that this time, damn it. <laughs> that 18 hit. Oh, sorry. Uh, Nat 1 will miss, obviously. 18 will hit. Seven kinetic. And let's go ahead and. All right. Hold on. Uh, it's a nat three. He's not going to do that. So stunned until the end of your next turn. Stunned icon. Sure. All right. Anything else? Uh, do I get <clears throat> advantage now that he's starting to fail? You do, him? yes. Destroy him. They didn't need him. Never mind. Well, roll him again to see if. He, uh, are, how many are you doing? Just one more? Just a two, yeah. The or are you going to spend a point to do two? And then, yeah. Okay. Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. So roll them, roll two more because you can see if you crit. There you go. Okay. Well, sorry. Uh, you rolled the second one, one at advantage. So, but anyway. All right. Uh, so yes, definitely hit two more hits. So go ahead and those in. Okay. So eleven more points of damage. All righty. And is it? Dab. Uh, this guy's the only one we still see, right? Uh, by Remy, yes. And he's stunned? He is. So if I throw a little lightning bolt at him, it'll be an advantage or what? He automatically fails dexterity saving throws. Because he's stunned. Well, that won't help. Uh, actually, you know what? Um... Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just throw a shock at him, and I make a range attack. Uh, it is at advantage, but that's going to definitely hit. So, all right. Um... Eight. All right. Uh, use dodge as an action and end my turn. Okay. So that guy is down. R2, you are up. All righty. Uh, I guess we're going to start making our way over to them. Seeing as they're actively attacking him, I don't think it's metagaming. Uh... I wonder what they're shooting at in this hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nothing. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, assuming these doors are open, HK is going to... The first to, set is, yes. Yep. Yeah. Is going to uh, fire off a shot. Okay. You you have advantage on it as well. Don't need oh, okay. it. That's plenty. Takes yeah. them down. That was just for the advantage. So. Yep. That's fine. So yeah. That, right. uh, that comes out, and uh, he is down cool and then assuming they were not going out of combat r2 is going to ready a jet of flame at any uh anyone that you can see um who seems to be an active combatant okay i for now i'll, I'll leave it up um, but we'll kind of just uh, come out of combat for now. Uh, you, it seems that uh, as this last one uh, falls, uh, this thug falls, uh, as you stop and listen for a moment, uh, you don't hear any other movement, any other doors. Um, again, Cade and Remy, you both uh, had heard uh, that one run off. Are there... Are these like computer consoles here? What are these things? Um, those up there are. Uh, it seemed that the the HRD was kind of tapped into them. Um, things on the wall, yeah, just some various uh, computer type instruments. 
Hmm. It occurs to me that maybe we should have been uh, trying to capture some of these guys to ask them questions. Anyway, um, I'll go. I'll go down this way and see if this door unlocks or if it if it's locked or something. All right. Uh, yeah, you go up to it and uh, it is locked, and it does seem to be a mechanical lock, uh, similar to the one that was on the incinerator. I'll pop back out. Rix, can you come break this open? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Just say two. I don't know. Um, I don't know if we can pull any kind of information out of that droid's brain before we leave. That's what we came for, to a degree. Um, yeah, I will, uh, I guess, try to security unlock this door. Security kit, yes. You can, let R, you can let R2 try to take out that info while you're doing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good call. Yeah, the, uh, the AstroTech engineer. Yeah, I don't know. So, I do anything about that. <laughs> Rix uh, is able to uh, get this door open pretty quickly uh, and pop that open. And uh, as you do so, uh, you are greeted by a, a small room, uh, empty room. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I see it. Uh, can I search around for uh, fake panels, hidden walls? Because yes. that guy obviously came here. Maybe investigation check, people. please. Oh, good. This is my specialty. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sith Lords. You walk in, you are confused specialty. that uh, this room is empty. You you swear the uh, thug ran off into here. Yeah, so Cade pushes in there. It's like, well, where the hell did he go? Where did who go, Cade? One of the, one of the guys ran in here. Are you having hallucinations again, buddy? What do you I didn't mean? see anything. Did you guys see anything? I didn't see anything. Did you see anything, HK? I HK, don't have you eyes. Wouldn't lie. You wouldn't lie, would you? <laughs> HK yeah. sort of looks at everyone and then back at Cade. <laughs> and then uh, he says, um, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, R2 is going to try and uh, get out some of that info. All right. Seeing that Cade's at a loss, Rix will uh, come in and see if he can lend a helping hand here to please help figure right, out what's going go on. Give me an investigation check, Rix. Oh my god. Nope, not pretty good. Pretty, uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty hidden panels in here. See? <laughs> Jeez. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> my post and attitude will probably run out soon. I'll use it now. <laughs> there you go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, you dig around and it takes you a little bit, but, uh, you know, there's enough there to put two and two together. Uh, and you eventually come across uh, a panel in the floor that uh, does look like where they. You see the tiniest little latch that's that's pretty well disguised in there that looks like a, he escaped through. Uh, R2, give me a slicer's kit check. Righty. Oh. Hey, all right. So uh, you are you're, you're doing this He's in the matrix. against the um, the HRD, correct? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure where all I had to be is over here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if you were, you were, because that's what it sounds. Uh, yeah, that's what, what I, I thought you guys were doing, right? Okay, yep. So uh, you tap into this thing, uh, you know, examining the other one that you had, uh, you know, helps you out a little bit to dig into this one. And uh, you tap in, and, you know, initially it's just. Uh, you know, programming and things like that. Uh, you go through, you find, um, you know, you get through some some uh, memories, uh, programmed memories, I guess, uh, that, you know, it, for you, maybe um, an interesting concept to discover uh, that these Definitely. things were, um, you know, given these memories, even almost like childhood memories, uh, to just make them that much more human-like. Uh, to think they are, uh, and then 
beyond that, uh, you... There's a little bit of, um, you know, I guess, uh, production or manufacture data in there, uh, source data, uh, and it just kind of uh, pinpoints it uh, to this specific model to the um, power plant, uh, or, or at least the uh, facility here on TASPER 3 that seems to correlate with the power plant. Wonderful. Okay. I will uh, relay that information. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, do we go back down the hallway we know, or do we open up this panel and see where it goes? Door number two. Is that the panel? Which one's yeah. door number two? Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Door number two, panel number one. Yeah, let's see where the let's see where this goes. Rick's will say before we uh you know venture off and chase down bad guys, he could use some right. something. Something if anybody's got anything here. Here, I'll get you. I'll spend three points to do a second level heal. Wow! Oh, that's sweet. Oh. It's just five. <laughs> All right, I'll take five. Take. Oh, and Remy did, Remy did What are you two. rolling, Remy? Uh, Owl of Restoration. Oh, you can only do that, though, when you're attacking something. Oh, when you would of the wall. go over there and punch yeah. the wall. <laughs> no, it says like when you would make an arm strike, you can spend one focus oh, point okay. to instead uh, touch a willing creature within your reach. <laughs> so um, Remy comes over looking like he's gonna slap the shit out of you, <laughs> <laughs> and he just touches no. you on the cheek and gives you eight healing points. <laughs> so if it flies right in his face, and then you just see my finger poke out. <laughs> <Devil>. Boop. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. <laughs> All right, so uh, you guys are going to attempt to head down this secret passage? After yep. we raid and loot these bodies. All right. I, I guess after that, then. <laughs> Whoever right. is in on that, give me investigation checks. Um, while they're doing that, sorry, Todd, can you, can you say what, what they found on the, on the droid again? So I can uh, write it down this time. That's yeah, funny. essentially, so, you know, the flavor side of it, uh, just, uh, some memories and whatnot, uh, uh, it's programming, uh, the, the key information was that, uh, it's, it was sourced basically, uh, in a facility here on Tasper 3. Uh... So it was like it was built there, or it's programming. Uh, poten bas potentially both, yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so, uh, digging through the thugs, uh, you find um, one of them has a... Oh, I just closed, I think, all of my stuff. I... Uh, uh three carbine blasters a uh wrist data pad uh device uh four simple vibro blades uh each one had a com link five com links and a grand total of hundred and uh hundred and fifty credits. Sweet. Chang, dude. 
we can all have calm links now. I think some of us were missing some. The, uh, the HRD did have a blaster pistol as well. Yeah, I'm good. And also very much ready to head on down. Let's do it. Yep. So All right. Go. So uh, yeah, back to back to tank shower around here or anything? Yeah. <laughs> I have a, I have a med pack I can drop you. Right How now. The I'll hurt. be fine for right now. I've got a med pack too I can use. <laughs> got two of them. So. All right. So I uh, deciding to head towards this uh, secret. Uh, escape route, uh, Ricks. You, your investigation of the room did discover that this thing is locked, uh, so you will need to uh, get that thing open. Give me a security kit check. All right, that definitely does it. You're able to pop that thing open. Uh, lifts open, and you see a uh, a pretty uh, narrow, dark tunnel uh, with a ladder. So this goes um, down a little bit at first. Uh, there is some very uh, dim lighting. Uh, it looks like it goes down uh, maybe 10 feet and then uh, then hits a floor level and then uh, takes off to the to the east. All right. uh, do we uh, want to be sneaky about this? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I'll head. All right. down. I well, can smuggle us in if we want. That'd be good. Do it. Nice. I'll go down first. Unless anyone else wants to. How are you doing on health? Um, I'm at fifty two out of seventy five. I'm doing okay. All right. Just let me just uh right. let me just go next to you holding your hand, just in case. <laughs> I can go I can go down first. I haven't took damage yet. <laughs> All right. I'll go down after Remy. I mean Um, should we all roll stealth checks then? If you, yeah, if you guys are stealthing, yes, you can. So that's a 33 for me. 13. HK, squeaking in with a 16. Jeez. You just get down into the tunnel and just dab, just his voice echoing through the tunnel. <laughs> they went this way! <laughs> Quiet! What? <laughs> All right, so you uh, climb through. Uh, it's it's you single file, uh, moving along. Uh, there is very very dim light here, utility lights. Uh, the tunnel just goes on. Um, and follow that along. Uh, no other doors initially, or any other passages. It just seems straight through, uh, and you eventually. Um, you know, go on a ways and, and come to a little bit of an opening. Uh, there is a, uh, it opens up a little bit where, you know, maybe uh, three of you could stand together and there is a, uh, uh, you know, passageway, a door here essentially that leads somewhere. A door. Does where we was like the vision like causing anything like against us or not necessarily? Say that again. Was like the darkness like affecting us at all or no? Not, not really. There's there's dim light. It's not. Yeah. As we went down the passage, you say we were, like we were going like downward. It wasn't flat. You went down. 10 feet and then you started then it flat then you hit a, a level floor and then you're going level passage and then you're yeah okay gotcha not going any deeper let's open the door do we hear anything on the other side of the door uh you can give me a perception check it does look like to be a very substantial uh door here Almost too substantial. 
<laughs> uh, so you hear um it's it's very tough uh remy and Cade, uh you guys get something uh from the other side but it's it's really just the uh heavy you know basically white noise of uh of some sort of facility uh or power plant ah interesting so this would be a much easier way to get in well through the front door yeah instead of walking in the front door and blowing it up <laughs> yep well ricks i think this is a you job unless you want me to cut through it is the door locked it is definitely locked okay but this is a um oh. this does have uh a electronic uh okay. system to it oh or two then uh -huh. oh All right, so it uh, doesn't take much, and uh, R2 is able to uh, get past the uh, lock system here. Uh, it opens up, and uh, with a whoosh, the panels of the door slide open, and uh, you are now, uh, from what you can tell, inside some sort of uh, factory uh, facility. Do we see people around? Uh, yeah, give me a, a quick perception check. All right. Uh, so you do. You see a few people uh, in the distance. Um, you've kind of entered into, you know, the side, uh, the side entrance. Uh, but it, it does pretty quickly open up, and you see um, a few massive, uh, you know, almost like silos, and and then there's machinery equipment, there's piping, and and things going all over the place in this uh, facility here. Uh, but you do see a few people here and there. Uh, it doesn't look like anyone has turned their attention to you yet, and they all are wearing a, you know, kind of a nondescript coverall. They definitely look to be, you know, like a, a worker of sort here in the, uh, in the facility. So it's not full of black sun, black sun lackeys. They're actually just hardworking everyday task workers. From what uh, you initially see, yes. We don't see the guy. That no, no, nope, you don't see any trace of that. Nope. Damn it. So. All right. Uh, from here, let's take a quick break. I need one real quick, and then we'll come back to this and uh, see how you guys get through the facility. So we're ready. I never did check with K to see if this was going to be. The information we got from the HRD enough for what the Republic wanted. I mean, as thorough a scouting as we can do, I assume, you know, the more the better. If we, if we find out that... I mean, it's not as if we can start cutting people down inside this factory. <laughs> it's like a legal establishment. I right. Mean, well, I don't know if there's anything back in that lab we didn't investigate when we left. Well, there's those computer consoles. That's what sound like bad, but if we do kill everyone, it's not like they know. I... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Throwing it out there. Proud of you, Remy. Proud. Alrighty. So you all make your way down this dark tunnel from the uh, mountain hideout into uh, this secret entrance of sorts into uh you assume to be uh the main power plant facility here on tasper three uh there is the heavy uh white noise the heavy din of the just all the machinery and everything going on uh around you as you look about uh there's scaffolding and um piping and and all sorts of things uh before you uh and you do see uh, a handful of workers here and there, various uh, computer consoles, uh, looking over uh, gauges and, and meters and whatnot, uh, going about their day, just making sure that everything is operating correctly. Uh, you do not see any sign of the Black Sun uh, thug that uh, you essentially are coming after who uh, 
cut loose from your combat. Uh, and so you're now inside the inside this facility. Uh, so this uh, what uh, I guess what's uh, what are you guys uh, looking to do at this point? Uh, um, that's a really good question. Sorry if you said this already. What do they make in this factory? Power. Well, then why don't we take over the factory? Control their means of production. Seize yeah. the means of production. I don't know. I don't know if we need to do that. Our two needs to do that. Kate, give me an intelligence check, please. Yeah, Kate. yeah, that's gonna I'll go well. Too. Oh uh -huh. wow! <laughs> <laughs> a fucking zero, Todd. I yeah, rolled a zero. Kate just, collapses. Just wow. Yep. You, Kate, Kate is is. Uh, Debating with Dab about uh, this, and he just he just goes, "Do um, <laughs> I got nothing?" <laughs> the rest of you guys, let's see. Um, I am actually, the Jedi. Uh, R two and Rix, you guys, uh, intelligence checks, please. Yes. Okay. R2, you would remember, uh, as you all were talking, Cade, I think, was specifically talking to a gentleman, uh, a worker from the power plant earlier. Um, you recall that he did mention something about uh, this Celestin that... Uh, I forget exactly, so if you guys remember uh, what we yeah, had mentioned the... earlier, but, um, you know, essentially it seemed like he, you know, he was potentially... Uh, somewhat of an important individual uh, that this this worker that you talked to, you know, kind of saw him come and go, but uh, not much beyond that. Do we happen to see any Celestins walking around? So we should just try to find that guy. It's worth a shot, right? All right. So this will be uh, we will enter a skill challenge here to oh, our, our favorite red green meter that we're so good we're so good at <laughs> seek out uh, and try and find this Celestin here within the power plant facility. Uh, you will have uh, some specific options that you can do to try and uh, get through this. Uh, you cannot go um, twice in a row, so uh, different people need to uh, step up and do some things. Uh, and you need to get five successes before you get three failures. Otherwise, there may be uh, some issues. So as you look about, uh, you notice all the scaffolding that maybe uh, you could uh, climb up and uh, try and get up to some of the rafters and sneak around some of the workers there. Uh, you can uh, maybe be pretty direct with some of the workers and uh, try your hand at deception to just let the, tell them that you're supposed to be here and to just ignore them. Uh, you can sneak around and attempt stealth uh, those will be the main uh, ways to get around. And, uh, you know, if there's something else that you think uh, you could do to try and uh, get through this, um, let me know and we'll see how that, if that uh, works out. Reese and I are going to fly up like studs. <laughs> that is not stealthy at all. <laughs> I was going to say, we still have Smuggle, like, running. I assume it has not been one hour. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. It's if Dab wants to fly silently, he can do that. Um, my stealth is pretty good, especially with a plus 10. That gives me a plus 21 to my stealth rolls. Uh, one other thing here is that you can trade a success for a failure. So if you get a failure and then someone succeeds, they can, they can remove a failure. So you don't gain the success, but it takes away the failure. Okay, so cancel it out? Yes. Okay. So... 
you'd still have to still get that you know five successes but you at least get rid of one of your favorites mm -hmm. okay i am envisioning a lot of back and forth right now um <laughs> I don't know, Dab, if you want to try to bluff our way through this. Um, I don't know what to say, Kane. I'm so happy right now that you asked. <laughs> I thought you might be. Uh, yeah. yeah Todd, 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 do we have to just do like one method of this? Or like if Dabs mm -hmm. and Cade go off and try to decept people? I can go off and do sneaky things or right. It'll be, it'll be it. kind of like a round by round. So um, let's uh, okay. roll initiative just to help us kind of keep track here. It doesn't really mean much other than that, just to keep track. And then, you know, if, if you're just not going to do anything, that's fine. We'll kind of skip over it. But um, yeah. Okay. I mean, Thanks. you you guys are still going to be kind of moving as a group for the most part, but uh, you know, one person will kind of, basically handle it for the group. Who hasn't, who hasn't had a moment to shine recently? Dab, are you, is that a purposeful reroll or just a... Yeah, because I forgot to put myself on the click on... Oh, okay. So. Uh, yeah, R2, just my... need you on. Yep, sorry. I mean, this is, this is Cade's Mission, isn't it? Technically. Come on, Cade. I believe in you. Uh... <laughs> I give you guidance. I mean, I can do that to myself. Okay. But, um, <laughs> that, wasn't that wasn't a flex. That wasn't a flex. I'm just saying. That's um, never said. again. <laughs> um, Todd, is this the Republic world? Um, not sure, but I kind of think no. Mm, F. There goes that plan. Um, can I can I assist Cade in deception, Todd? Uh, yeah. Well, you can. Cade cannot. Oh, so that's the other thing. You have to be proficient in the ability uh, to uh, to make an attempt. Yeah, I'm not proficient in this. What are you good in? Persuasion? Mm, I mean, <laughs> technically, <laughs> technically, I'm proficient in it, but. But? But it's a plus four. <laughs> okay, mine's a plus eight. I'm going to help you. Let's, let's go tell the truth for once. Why would you not do it? Um, I got to figure out what to say then. Um, is. I'm not looking for like I'm not looking for like a manager or anything like that. I'm looking for one Karen. of the plebs. Can I speak to your manager? So oh, you, the first attempt here, Cade, you are going to go and uh you're you, you're going to use persuasion. Yeah, and I want I want to talk to just one of the random workers and say like, "Hey, you seen a Solison around here?" Um not even going to address the fact that I'm not dressed for this area. I'm just going to ask him or ask them, you know. Okay. So uh, go ahead and give me a persuasion check. If and I have Dab's help? Yes. With advantage? Okay. Please, sir. There you go. All right. A 24. Uh, a, so that was a nat 20 and a nat one just so we're all clear <laughs> perfectly balanced uh so you come up to a worker and he right away just you can see that he's he's confused by who the hell you are what you're doing here <laughs> mean uh, same and um you know he the he questions the overalls uh <laughs> um <laughs> But Not uh right. <laughs> you you give a you know you give a decent uh, argument to you know as trying to figure out where this person is or whatever and um 
the the gentleman uh, is just, uh, you know, yeah, I've seen him around in passing, but, uh, you know, I don't know. This is a, a pretty massive place. Um, sorry, I just, I don't, I don't really know what to tell you. And he just kind of goes okay. off. Um, so I will uh, give you a success on that, uh, that... Uh, this conversation didn't trip up any red alarms from this employee. All right. Then we'll make ourselves scarce, I guess. Trying... Did we did we get the sense that he was being evasive? Uh Dab, you can give me an insight check on that. I would also like to ask that question. Why? Uh yeah, Kay, you can do that the only Jedi in the fucking galaxy that doesn't have proficiency in this skill. <laughs> I, I mean, you get the feeling that, you know, he's just a worker here, and you just, you know, he, he, at first, it was like, who are you, what are you doing here, kind of a thing, but uh, you smooth-talked well enough to, you know, to, and were friendly enough that, you know, he, he just basically was like, whatever. Uh, carried on, even though he had no real information. Fair enough. Okay. All right. R2, would you like to uh, attempt anything? Uh, not yet. I'm waiting for a, a good opportunity. All right, Rix. Um... I think Rix would like to do something sneaky. Um, I think Rix would like to try and find a um, like a storage area, like a storage uh, closet, and see if maybe he can find like a uniform to throw on to kind of blend in with the uh, the crowd stealthily to observe what's going on. Okay. Uh, first, give me an investigation check. Okay. All right. Uh, you look around for a bit, and uh, you you do come across um, a a little kind of break area that uh, seems like it might have uh, what you're looking for. Um, there are, however, uh, a couple workers in here currently. Mm, okay. Well, I'm not proficient at any uh, bit deception. I guess I could persuade them that I'm I belong, and I'm just asking around. Um, <laughs> hmm. Your main um, opportunities here are to potentially climb up through some of the uh, scaffolding and whatnot via athletics or acrobatics, uh, use deception on the workers, uh, stealth around, and uh, potentially yeah, I mean, so. uh, slice into some of the, uh, maybe see if you can slice into some computer consoles to get uh, some information. Yeah, we'll do a uh... Stealthing around. Okay. Now give me a stealth check. Yeah, that'll do it. You lead the group uh, around, uh, bypassing uh, some areas where there are some workers and just finding a very, um, yeah, <laughs> plus 10, yeah. so a 41. So we're all clear. Yeah, that's a, a nice 41. 41. Jeez. Uh, so you lead uh, them deeper into this facility. Uh, completely unnoticed. Uh, so you get another success. Uh, Remy, anything you would like to specifically attempt? <clears throat> um, let's go ahead. Do uh, you said acrobatics for like getting up to the? Yep. Raptors. Yep. You look around and and you see after Rix leads you through, you you find uh, an area that you could. 
uh, guide your companions uh, up, climbing up, and uh, you think you can go overhead for a little bit of the journey at least. Yes, if you'd like, give me an acrobatics check. Right, that uh, will just do it. So, you guys are at three successes here. You uh, move further up uh, to where you need to go. Uh, dab. So you said we see three of them in the break room? Uh, you guys are past that now. Do I see any other workers around? Yeah, they're here and there. Do I see any isolated? You know, maybe taking like a cigarette break or something? Um, there's, they're kind of at different stations. So you've got, you know, you've got a large, uh, whatever, power producing unit. And then there's, you know, like one one person there that's kind of observing all the, the data and information uh, of that. And then, uh, you know, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 feet away, you'd have another one. So they're... Sorry. They're... What's that? Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so just uh, you see one, and then another is maybe about 15, 20 feet away. They're just, that's kind of their distance. What do we know about the... the, the is there a quorum we're looking for? Do we have a name? Uh, the Celestin? Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. You don't know anything other than a Celestin. Did not uh, find any information. And all the ones that I can see within our range are not Celestin. Correct. These are humans. Uh, and yeah, they, they are definitely just standard workers. All right. I'll just, uh, I'll go up to one of them and ask if... Uh they can help us find a corn that we're looking for who is dying and we have medicine for. A Celestin, you're really after a corn for some reason. Yeah, Celestin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a deception check. Okay. So uh, you head up to the worker and the worker... Uh, you see a little bit of a reaction in his face, and uh, he says, uh, under almost under his breath, he says, uh, "Cyan, what's wrong with Cyan?" And then he he kind of snaps his attention back to you, and uh, he says, um, then out loud he says, "Oh, what, is there something wrong?" He's uh, he, he's you know very likely uh, down in his uh, in his offices. In his lab. Yes, he's uh he's suffering from a very grave disease. Uh, it's called uh, Carver Pox, and we need to get him this medicine soon. Can you please point us in the direction? So the worker does tell you, basically points you in the correct direction uh, to go and and try and find uh, the Celestin. That uh, you picked up under his breath, uh, named him Cyan. You guys are at four successes, so doing quite well. Uh, Cade, you are up. Um, I mean, I guess we'll start heading that way. Um, and if there are any challenges that seem suited to me when. <laughs> As we go, I will, of course, undertake them. But I so don't. So you can, um, you could attempt to climb up and around, uh, like Remy did earlier with athletics. You can uh, go the stealth route, um, and that's kind of the, the big ones for you. Hmm. Yeah, I'll go the stealth route. All right. And I will give myself guidance. Maybe. Boston. Why is my my character sheet is not scrolling? Hold on, I gotta refresh. Uh, roll twenty is really good until it's until it's not, and then it's not. <laughs> All right. Plus uh, ten. Yeah, plus ten. So that uh, does take care of it. So. 
All right, you guys are able to get through the warehouse uh, or the facility, sorry, um, undetected and or, uh, you know, under the, the nose of the workers without really throwing up any sort of a fuss. Uh, you eventually come to a part that uh, the worker pointed you in the direction of. Uh, you come into sort of a hallway that has um, uh, two or three very large just columns that go up in the middle of it uh, that are kind of tied in. And you look before you and you see um, a room, a large room on the right. Uh, there, It looks like there's a room that turns off at the end of it, at the left, but on the left, uh, at the end of the hallway. And then on the left side of this hallway, uh, you see a large open um, kind of workspace office, uh, if you will, as you come up towards that. And um, from the distance, uh, you can see what looks to be a Celestin uh, at a computer desk there. So you guys come in on the left side here. He must be gaming. <laughs> yeah. Drinking Mountain Dew. Got the new Destiny drop. So give me a perception check as you guys step in here. Cool. Or what light level he is. <laughs> All right, so everyone is uh, pretty uh, pretty perceptive right now, paying attention to their surroundings and whatnot. Uh, so you pick up the Celestin on the left there uh, as you come in, uh, kind of stepping past that first uh, large column there. But you also notice on the right side, the room to the right, oh, there no. are four uh, these kind of small... Uh, human-sized tanks or chambers, if you will, uh, with uh, a frosted glass, and you see uh, four uh, figures kind of suspended within those. Um, let's continue the stealth route and try to sneak up on them. Well, there might not be a way to sneak up on him. Sure there is. I cast invisibility on Cade. Go for it. Goodbye, friend. But All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. I will again cast guidance on myself, and I'm gonna try to get up behind this guy, wait until I'm right behind him, and then kind of activate my lightsaber over his throat, like not in his throat, over his throat. <laughs> Don't get excited, Dab. <laughs> Freudian slip. Um, and just I I'll. Make well, sure his hands don't rules. hit the console. <laughs> I mean, Chop off his hands if you have yeah. to. Yeah, can you like force push him away from it? Actually, that is a good... Mm, my mm -hmm. DC is really low, though. Alright, really so uh, the rest of you guys, give me stealth checks as you guys are hanging out. And I have advantage, right? Uh, yeah. It, yeah. Ah. That's a... Uh, that's a 36. All right. Uh, so, uh, Cade, give me a perception check, please. Sure. Uh, All right. As you come into this room uh, and you, you start heading towards the Celestin, he's busy working away at the... Uh, uh, computers in front of him. You see, you know, computer equipment all over the place, uh, and he's he's just very focused and, and just wildly uh, tapping away on his keyboard. Uh, looks like he's just very studiously working. Uh, you do notice, though, something around his neck, some sort of a device. Life alert. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. He really does have the carver box. Not a necklace style. It's like a a choker or a a uh, neck or a brace. Or a slave collar. Or Very yes, a way. collar. Yes. A dog shot collar. <laughs> Shit. Well, that complicates things. Um. Hi, I'm Cade Carver. I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> You're a little short for a Jedi. <laughs> Hey, I'm five foot ten. 
It's mm-hmm. in my character sheet. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, I don't suppose that this counts as an object being worn for the purposes of force disarm. I'm worried that if I try that, it will explode and kill him. So I'm not going to do that. You're just, you. what are you basing that on? Slave collars in, I mean, slave things in Star Wars have a tendency to do that. Ah, metagaming. Got it. Well, he's also been on the outer rim. He knows what. I don't know. All right, Todd. Does Cade have any experience with slave collars having been, you know, patrolling the outer rim for the better part of 10 years? I would say so. Do they tend to explode? Uh, you've seen it happen. <laughs> All right. It's not unheard of. <laughs> then my original decision still stands. I mean, I, Cade would probably have to make a lore check to know, to recall that. But okay, let's keep going. There's yep. a two. <laughs> There's a two. There it is. <laughs> Do it. All right. Yeah. If you if you want to base it off that, if I, I really <laughs> don't. Play your dice, buddy. Do your do your own memories and experience count as lore? Um. Just we'll do, see. Do, do think this right, Cade. <laughs> At Cade, this point, Cade, give me an insight check, please. Okay. As you sit here and you you observe the Celestin, uh, he shows no signs of discomfort. Uh, he shows no real expressions of you know frustration or anything. He seems pretty content. If if not, you know, almost he he he's really into his work. Uh, it's likely something he enjoys, and and you you can kind of pick up on that. You know, he he's in a very content mood. Okay. Um. Then uh, let me kick this off. Probably, I'm gonna try to force pull him away from the console. Or hmm. Uh, there's a better chance of of this working than there is. Yeah, I'm gonna force. I'm gonna move him. Uh, I'm gonna try to move him ten feet. Is he small or medium? He's medium. Okay, I'm gonna try to move him ten feet this way. I can get up here before I do it, if I can, with my thirty six. Okay. And then I will move him away from the console. So he needs to make a, a strength or... Nope, just strength, I believe. Couldn't you strength make like a survival check since you're invisible? Oh, what? Couldn't you make like a grapple check against him, invisible, like at advantage? I don't know, Tob. What's the ruling on that? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know about advantage. You know, he's going to notice something as is on him right away and you know then go against that but i was just offering a suggestion keep going what what's kate doing yeah i'm gonna try to force pull him away uh he got a natural 20. awesome all right well that's my invisibility uh does that drop when you do that i mean it drops when you cast a power um Dab casted it on you, correct? Yep. But the You you broke it, right? Is that yeah. how it works? Okay. Alright. So I uh, you reach out and try to pull the uh Celestin away from the desk. And for some reason, uh as as much as he is uh, into his work, he just feels this uh, pull on him and instinctively just latches onto the desk and resists it. And then he turns around and he sees you standing there. Uh, and then his expression completely changes uh, to just it. Uh, confusion and whatnot. And he says, who, who are you? What are you doing here? 
take a step back from the console. I am simply here doing my work. You are the intruder. Yeah. Take a step back. Give me a... Uh, persuasion or intimidation check. Well, let's go with intimidation. Awesome. It was the same Sweet. modifier. So. He, he says, again, I am doing nothing wrong here. I am doing work as I always do, carrying on, minding my own business, and you just show up and who knows what. Perhaps uh, let me know who you are and why you are here. I'm going to keep an eye on his hands because I don't want him to wake up those HRDs. But I will say, my name is... Hey. God damn it. <laughs> my name is Clay. Go eat and some hay down by the bed. I'm, I'm here investigating the Black Sun. Give me an insight check, or give me a perception check, please. Perception check, okay. What? Okay. A nasty seven. I don't even know, man. Nasty. As well, uh, it's a little nasty. You're, you're uh, not really in the right place for that. Yeah? Because we followed some Black Sun operatives here. Yes, that's that's likely, but this is not where they they hang out. Right, I misspoke. We're <laughs> investigating the development of human replica droids. That seems to be what's going on right here. You see, his uh, eyes light up a little bit. Uh, he says, "Well, yes." That is, and he waves his hands out in a gesture, and he says, that is what I'm doing here. I am the lead developer on this technology. Well, your work is very convincing. Now, how did that? Are you making these droids for Black Sun? Yes, uh, one way or another, that's that's one way to put it. How would you put it? Kind of looks around as if he's, you know, checking for somebody else around. He says, tell me, your name is Clay? For now, sure. So convincing. <laughs> For now, sure. And you are not here with the Black Sun? I am not. I will I will um like I have my I have my lightsabers are in my hands, but not lit, and I will just levitate one above my hand and then catch it again. He um He has a little, he definitely reacts to that a little bit. Uh, and it's a tinge of relief, um, but, but also anxiety as well comes over him. And he leans in, uh, he kind of leans in towards you. He says, uh, to put it lightly, I am employed, forcibly employed, if you will. By the black sun here. I'll point. I'll point at my own my own neck and like kind of tug at my collar, and then point at him and kind of. Yeah, I can see that. Yes, this uh, unfortunately is uh, part of my um, compensation, uh, or, or I guess. Uh, contract, if you will, uh, for, for working here. But 
I get to do something that I enjoy. Uh, I have to just try and ignore, you know, the results of the work and what they may be doing with it, but I guess it's, uh, you know, there's worse alternatives. I have a feeling that um, the Black Sun aren't the best people to work for. Speaking of, do your employers come to check on you often? Occasionally, yes. But uh, I have done good work. I have uh, been trustworthy, and uh, I have produced uh, produced good results. I have, uh, in fact, four uh, four fresh uh, specimens uh, ready to uh, be delivered to to my employer. And he kind of just gestures across the room. Uh, so they treat me well enough. I come in and I get to do work that I enjoy. And I you know, get to go home to decent living. But this is, you know, this is it. This is where I am. I have a feeling that my employers may be a little more gracious with how you spend your free time. And that they won't put a collar on you if you'd like to come work for them. Well, I have full belief in the threats, Garrick and the Black Sun here, that if this thing comes off, so does my head. I might have friends that might be able to take a look at that. <laughs> he immediately is just like, no, there there won't even be an attempt. I, I am sure that this thing is, you know, rigged, booby-trapped, whatever. If Even if they were able to attempt that, unless they were very successful. I'm As I said, this isn't a perfect life, but it's a good life. And it's better than... The alternative. There's only one way to likely deactivate this, and that's likely Garrick himself. It's not out of the question. Do you know where this Garrick spends his time? You uh, did not come across him. You said you came in through their hideout, no? <laughs> You know, we might have. Can you describe this Garrick for me? Older gentleman. Uh, scruffy gray. Facial hair a little bit. Uh, dark. A little bit longer black hair. Uh, this uh, ringing any bells, Todd? No, not at all. Wonderful. <laughs> hey guys, remember that hallway we didn't go down? Yes, <laughs> Nice. Uh, he says uh, he, he has an eye patch as well. That's pretty distinctive. Well, no, we didn't see him there. Well, if you went through there, uh, he is likely uh, took off. Definitely are known to run at the site of uh, significant trouble. So just, just you have come through here? You said you had friends. Where are they? Is this guy being straight with me? Give me an insight check. And in regards, in regards to what? In like, regards to... Uh, I mean, he seems pretty comfortable with his shitty situation. Is he, <laughs> is he actually that comfortable? Is he... Is this a setup? <laughs> Are we being punked? <laughs> Give me an uh, insight check. Come on, this would be a great time to not roll a seven. <laughs> cool. He seems quite genuine. I mean, it's, you know, as I think he's said as well, it's the alternative is, you know, definitely not good. I mean, he's, you know, he's he's definitely not excited about a situation, but right. it's it's what it can be.
I will, uh, I'll come back around the corner and kind of wave everyone over. As we're coming over, do you want to just ask him if we take care of his employer, if he'll come with us? Yeah. I mean, that's what I was getting to. If we take care of Garrett, how would you feel about not making these droids for a crime syndicate? He, uh, <coughs> excuse me, says, yeah, um, that of course would be amazing, but I, I unfortunately, I'm not certain that simply taking care of Garrick, uh, gets me out of the situation. Right. But, hypothetically, hypothetically, if there was a way, then perhaps I would consider relocating. Well, <clears throat> does Garrick have any sort of schedule? Does he make regular check-ins? No, and I, I'd say, unfortunately, if you've spooked him off, we might not see him for a few days. All right. Does this place have security cameras? Is there any way you can get into them to, so that we don't have a we don't leave a record of us being here? It might cause problems for you down the line. Uh, he says, um, you know, likely there is. Uh, that's I I can attempt to try and get in there, but I would rather not uh, have a trace back to me doing so. R2, what do you think? Uh, I can always give it a shot. My friend here is pretty good at what he does. I uh, try. R2, you have not completed Demolitions Kit yet, correct? No, not yet. Okay. It's a shame. Um, yeah. I mean, all right, I'll, I'll kind of give us one second, Cyan. Um, so, I'm not really sure what the Republic wants me to do here. Can you phone a friend to find out? Well... I mean, I don't think my comp, what, what kind of, uh, do I have to be on the ship to calm Coruscant? Uh, there might be an, you know, ability to communicate out of here. Okay. Well, I will then. R2, go ahead and give me a slicers check. Waiting. Yeah, there's a bunch of people yep. here. I'll oh, yeah. out and, uh... Thirty. So you're able to get slip in and um, you know review some of the security footage. You you guys did pretty good. So there's only a moment or two where you kind of went up and talked to some of the workers, uh, but you're able to scrub that uh, data and basically erase uh, all traces of your existence here so far. And also in in this specific area as well. Yeah. Okay. Um. Why did I tell you, Cyan? Bam. <laughs> Don't say bam to the dude with a bomb around his neck. That's not boom. Bad. That's worse. <laughs> um, and I will, I will uh, get on my comms and see if I can't um, reach my contact in the Republic. Okay. Uh, so you'd be able to send a message. Okay. Essentially, you're not going to be able to do. Yeah, probably not like a two way. So. Okay. Sure. So I'll send, uh, this is Jedi Carver. We've found a factory that seems to be producing human replica droids. It's controlled by the Black Sun. The scientist here seems to be amenable and might be interested in a change of situation if we can assure him that he's not going to die in the process. He does seem to be wearing a slave collar. Please advise. And I'll... Cut off the message. So, uh, 
there's not an immediate response a few moments but eventually uh, you do get a, a response back acknowledging the message and saying that um, you know commending uh, your work and your information and saying that um, they can send uh, a team out to try and um, you know, basically uh, further infiltrate uh, the station here and see about uh, taking care of the Celestin situation. All right. Um. Then I will. I'll, I'll go back to Cyan and say, "All right, looks like the Republic can send a team out here. Not they're not going to break down the doors. They can infiltrate the the factory, and they can see about remedying your uh, situation. They've got the resources to pull this off." You see a little bit of a nervous look on his face. Um, but give me a give me a persuasion check. Okay, I will use I will guide myself, guided by the force. Rix, get your manacles ready. There we go. <laughs> uh, so he he's anxious and nervous listening to you, but uh, as you continue on. Uh, there is a glimmer of relief and hope that comes over his face as he seems to accept that potentially there is a way out of the situation. As, uh, if, if you think that they can uh, do this and without causing any trouble to me, I of course would be forever grateful. Well... As far, as far as your current employer is concerned, we were never here. R2 waves his manipulators about all mystically. <laughs> <laughs> you saw nothing. The Celestin nods. Acknowledgement. Sweet. We'll probably make ourselves scarce then. He did say that if we spook this guy off, he's not going to be seen for a couple days, right? Yeah. Correct. Make like a tree and get the krill out. Um, I got the idea from that message that our work here is done, right? I read that right? Yeah, essentially. I, I mean, basically, uh, you know, let the Celestin know that they can come and, and deal with the situation. You know, you, yeah. Okay. Well, good luck, Cyan. He uh, nods and, and thanks you and, and says, uh, I appreciate it. I hope this turns out, and I do hope that your people can come through. All right, we should get out of here. I do, I do want to find the guy that we asked that directed us to Cyan's lab. Before we leave, I just in passing. Okay. I want to drop a thousand credits in his hand and say, I mean, for Cyan's sake, because he seemed concerned. He seemed concerned about Cyan. I said, for Cyan's sake, we were never here. Kate, why don't we just grab him and go? No. R2 can take off his collar. What's the problem? R2 starts, like, pinching his manipulators in the air. The Celestin goes from his hopefulness to his worry, and he just says, it's... <laughs> He's obviously I don't not think comfortable it can be with that. <laughs> unless, uh, unless you, you were able to find uh, something off of Garrick. He is, he is the main one that controls this. 
okay, we'll try it your way. And when that doesn't work, you're coming with us anyways. Let's go. <laughs> ah. he, he, uh, his expression changes a little bit to frustration. He says, you should, you should take a, a lesson in manners from your friend here. Uh, oh. <laughs> My oh. nosy friend. Uh, <laughs> Don't kill him, Deb. <laughs> Deb. What manners? What are manners? I am in a situation that I don't love, but it is as best as it can be. I have appreciated and welcomed uh, Clay's opportunity here, and that is unless you are able to retrieve the key, whatever, to deactivate this thing, uh, I will not be leaving this place. Consent okay. is important. Okay, who's Clay? Sorry. He <clears throat> points out, uh, he points to, to Cade. My name oh. is Cade. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, we better be leaving now. Bye bye. Consent <laughs> is important. If the guy that has a bomb around his neck says no, then you listen to him. We're leaving. <laughs> We're leaving. And I do the thing that I said earlier. Give the guy a thousand credits. Okay, before that, uh, as you guys are heading off, Shit. Cade, uh, the Celestin, you know, grabs you by the arm and, and says, I, again, I appreciate what you are attempting to do for me. But if I see you all again, especially him, and you do try to bring me out of here, I will have protection. And he nods across the room to the four HRDs waiting. That's not very intimidating, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll like just two dice first. nod. <laughs> I don't mean, appreciate You mean friends. well. Don't worry. We're not going to get you killed. And then I'll turn to go. All right. How are you uh, heading out? Ah, you can do. Um, stealthily. Hmm. Stealthily would be good. Okay. So give me uh, stealth checks. I would say by now, I uh, smuggle has dropped. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. <laughs> okay. They have finally gotten to double digits. All right, so you guys uh, do well to get uh, kind of sneak back through. Uh, and then, Cade, give me an investigation check. Please. Guidance, please. God. So you come across uh, who you think is the gentleman that uh, Dab talked to. Earlier, no. And he just, he sees really you like approach that. him, and then uh, he then he sees Dab among you. He says, D "Did you find Cyan? Is is everything okay?" I'll just walk up to him, say, "Cyan's okay," and I'll take a thousand credits, put it in his hand, and say, "For his safety, we were never here." It's a medical confidentiality thing. Yes, and please keep at least six feet away from Cyan. Yep. <clears throat> The, the gentleman is just kind of flabbergasted. He's staring at the credits in his hands, and he just kind of looks up at you, and he doesn't really know what to say. Uh, give me a persuasion check at advantage, Cade. Mm -hmm. I'll guidance this, too. <laughs> I don't want to fuck this up. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nine and a ten plus your four. Absolutely. You did get a four on both, which is, you know, but... Impressive. He, he, uh, he looks at the money for a while, and he looks at you for a while, and uh, eventually he says, Okay, Cyan is a good friend. He, he does excellent work here. He's, he's in a rough situation. Uh, so, 
you understand that. I will. Do your part to keep him I safe. Will, yes, I will. And we I'll, will... And I'll yeah. lean in and give him 150 credits and say, and for your sake, we were never here as well. <laughs> this guy... <laughs> Honey, where did we get all this money? There are some really weird guys at the factory today. I don't know. Remy, give me an intimidation check. Uh, Come on, Remy. Hey! Yes! Yeah. For some reason, this uh, very exotic-looking uh, <laughs> creature with a, you know, amount of uh, credits nowhere in comparison to what was just handed to him, but still, the uh, threat seems to hold through, and he just he nods uh, sternly in in recognition of the threat. R two leans in and gives him two credits. As for my sake, I'm bored. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, give me another round of Why? stealth checks. All right, let's do this. Get out. <laughs> ah. oh, oh, time, so. 13. Could be worse. All right, so you uh, make your way out of the facility unnoticed, uh, and you come out to, uh, you know, it, it not you don't go back through the hideout. You come out through another entrance uh, exit. Uh, and you're now kind of on the side of the the building, uh, not too far from where you had initially came by and talked to that uh, one worker earlier in the day. Can we see the slight trail of smoke where we blew up three of those charges and just destroyed <laughs> it? <laughs> yes. All right. Good day all around. Yeehaw! All right. With uh, if if nothing further here on task for three, you guys can head back to your ship. Yep. So we're not going to take this guy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we're going to let him quick, let him quick deal. and some and some manacles, binders, and four HRDs to deal with. Yeah. If we stun him before. He hits the the thing. We're good. You sure you don't want to take him, Kate? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Look, look, he's the one with the bomb around his neck. Let him make the decision. Mm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, then we leave. Yep. Yep. So the only option is to get out of here, or try to track down Garrick, which would probably be difficult since he's probably. Hiding out. I'll keep an eye out for someone matching Garrick's description as we head back towards the spaceport. Okay. Yeah, are we are we heading back out the main entrance of the factory this time, or are we going back through the place no, that we you've were? You've come out the side of the building. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. I was gonna say no. Alright, we leave. So, uh, yeah, Cade, give me a perception check. Yo. <laughs> All right. Like you're a third or fourth. Yeah, I'm, nat I'm doing pretty good on those nat 20s. Not, not for attacks, but yeah. <laughs> As you keep your eyes open, uh, trying to find a gentleman that matches the description that Cyan gave uh, on your way back, uh, you don't see anybody stands out. All right. Well, let's head back to the ship. When we do, if we do get back to the ship, I want to like transmit some more specifics to the Republic, like mm -hmm. directions through the power plant, um, n names, the name of the Solisten, like details about the secret, uh, well, the Black Sun hideout. Right. Most importantly, to note that the front entrance is destroyed. However, there is a uh, incinerator shaft that you can climb down should you feel so inclined. Okay, so you guys head back to your ship. 
uh, without incident uh, going through the city. Uh, get back to that, and all is in order. You're able to send that message. Uh, you do have a response that uh, there is a team uh, getting ready to head out, uh, and uh, they should likely arrive in a few days to see what they can do about this uh, extraction. So. I will ask them to keep me posted because I'm curious how it's going to turn out for this guy. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, I will also inquire after payment. Okay. So, uh, yeah, they will get back to you on that. Uh, said that they will, uh, they definitely have found this information valuable. And uh, if you'll wait until after a hopefully successful extraction, uh, that uh, you and your counterparts will definitely uh, receive a worthy, worthy compensation for that. All right, I'll, I'll I'll come out into the. I assume we're back at the ship. I'll yeah. come out to the the uh, the mess hall and say, "Well, as soon as they get him out of there, we'll get we'll get payment." Thanks for all your help, everyone. I appreciate it. Anytime. All in a day's work. The engines fired up. Anywhere to head off to at this point? That's a good point. Where are we going? Are are we close to Corellia? I've heard they've got great whiskey. Uh, I mean, no, not super close, but mm. we're you're well, right I'm next door. Corellia, before we have but... nowhere else to go. You have some good gambling. Yeah, I thought we were gonna rob the casino. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Next time. Let's do that. Let's go uh, a casino robbing heist. Oh God! <laughs> I want space horses. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Remy, you get the ship fired up, uh, and um, operator, give me a whatever it is, intelligence check at advantage. Or tech, sorry, technology check. There you go. Yep. All right. So you're able to uh, calculate in the coordinates to get to Corellia. Uh, Remy, go ahead. And give me a piloting check. Yes. I knew it. I knew it was gonna happen. I've been rolling high all day, and then I knew another stupid piloting uh, check is gonna be low. So <laughs> it's uh, pretty straightforward. You're able to get up and out of there, uh, and you guys head towards uh, Corellia. And um, after. Uh, a few days, I believe it would be, uh, you know, a couple days at least, uh, you come out of your hyperspace and uh, arrive at, uh, at Corellia. So what exactly are we doing here? You didn't think this far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're here. Look, there's five planets. Let's leave. I mean, I'm sure there's like... R and R downtime, some gambling in, some drinking. Oh yeah, let's go to Corellia and check it out, man. We need to we need some vacation time <clears throat> while we wait for picked... the good news from the Republic for Cade. That is yeah. a good point. But we could have picked any planet. You know, there are nicer planets, right? Not awesome. really. Space horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, R two R two wants to get his uh, his gambling, uh, uh, you know. His it's scratched. Let's go. Yeah. All right. All right. So All right. you go and look for a uh, casino here uh, on Corellia. We're landing in Corona, like the capital city. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know of, um, you know, there, there's one place uh, that uh, for anyone that's came through. Uh, Corellia, uh, that uh, there is a casino called the Gilded Descent that is, uh, you know, sometimes a, a fun place to go and check out. Ooh. So Ooh. you guys arrive, you head over there to the Gilded Descent, and, uh, Todd, you know, what's Todd, that? Todd, 
in the spaceport when we land, is there like an information kiosk on like you know things to do, places to go? Yeah, pick up some brochures. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery spot. <laughs> Sorry, that's a Michigan thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, is there like an information kiosk with a person behind it or a, a, a robot? Uh, there would be um, there would be somebody available of of that uh, nature, yes, that you could find. Can I go? Can I ask them? Uh, can I go? Is so? Can I go up and and is it is it a human? Is it a uh, is it a, a droid? droid? So I walk up to the droid and I and I say, can I check the uh, Corellian registry, please? Motherfucker. <laughs> the droid says, uh, hello, sir. Yes, uh, somebody you are trying to locate. Yes, uh, anyone with the name Carver, and I, and I will pay any price for the, the registry re returns. One second, please. And I begins to check the database. Uh, Motherfucker. Uh, there do happen to be uh, quite a few entries here. Do you have any... Uh, further information to narrow it down. Uh, humanoid, uh, human specifically, um, probably within the last, how old is Cade? I don't know, Dab. How old is Cade? <laughs> uh, within the last 50 years. Uh, so the droid goes through and uh, seems to continue accessing the data uh, and says, um, uh, yes, uh, within those parameters, uh, I have found uh, narrowed down a little bit. Uh, I have uh, three entries here, uh, one male and two females. Wonderful. I would like uh, to pay for the the results, please, and uh, do not spare any expense on any detail. Please transfer them over to my data pad. Uh, the droid says, uh, yes, uh, certainly. And, um, you know, a, a data transfer of, of this uh, will be 25 credits. Here's 30. Keep the change. Thank you so much. So transfers over the um, the information to you. I head back to the group as we're on our way to the casino, and I I show it I show the data pad to Rick's, and I'm like, check it out. <laughs> Rick will just nod to Deb and not make a big scene about it. We're going to go to the casino and get Kate drunk before we drop it on him. Are you looking at the information? I'm sorry, Kate. We're going to we're going to we're going to get Kate drunk before we right, drop it. Right, but are you looking at the information, Dan? Yeah, I'm coming it to Rick's. Okay. So as you look at the information, uh you see that there was three names there, one male and two females. Uh you see that um there is a male named Cal, a female named uh Tyla, and the other female, Lilla. Uh, Cal and Tyla, uh, unfortunately, are marked as deceased no. as of 36 years ago. No. Yikes. But and, what about, and, what about, and what about the sister, I'm guessing, is a sister? Uh, the other, there is not much information uh, on the third individual listing there, Lilla, uh, just says that. Um, they are somewhere uh, here on the planet. You know what? I like Cade enough that I won't wait till he's drunk. Cade, you have a sister. And I show him the data pad. <laughs> this wow. is exactly why I didn't want to come here. I'll take the data pad. <laughs> and whatever you want to do with that information, we support you. Oh. Yeah, like if you want to like throw it into the ocean, go for it. He just stands there, uh, looking at the data pad, and kind of passes it back to you. Um, uh, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah. Clearly what I expected, but um, do you mind if we, you know, put a cork in it for now? Go sure. To casino? Sure. Let's go. Let's go have a good time and show our two of the ropes. It might be for the best. <laughs> All right. You continue on to the uh, Gilded Descent. Uh, as you enter in, there is uh, patrons everywhere, flashing lights, blinking lights, uh, noises, and whatnot. Uh, all about you. Droid servants uh, rushing around. There's some Twi'lek servants rushing around. Uh, helping the patrons or, or serving the patrons with drinks and and what else as they uh, gamble away uh, throughout the evening here uh, you see a, a lot of the good old standard uh, casino games that everyone enjoys there's the jubilee wheel uh, you have some uh, hintaro uh, lug jack um, and uh, you know there's a there's a one section that uh, has uh, a bunch of screens and you see uh, these creatures running across it and you see a lot of people cheering on as they follow the screens uh, and you recognize that. Uh, actually, everyone give me a quick lore check. <laughs> Kate is still the screen. This is, this, is, this is what I get for dumping intelligence. Honestly. <laughs> All right, Ricks, Ricks, and Remy, you guys uh, right away uh, pick it out that uh, the the race, the up there, this racing, it's the um, Odupiendo. I think I'm saying that. I think they nicknamed Doopies. Uh, these little, almost bird-like, weird creatures that uh, uh, are from Naboo, and uh, they're known to do to race with them. So there's uh, mm -hmm. Doopy racing. And then, uh, yeah, the other games. Jubilee Wheel, uh, similar to what it says. Basically, basically Star Wars Roulette. Slot Machines. Yeah. Do they have war? <laughs> they have... Um, what number am I thinking? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> no Sabacc tables and Gilded uh, Descent? There are, but uh, not. Uh, they look pretty full. What? What? Uh, you know, we we ask one of the uh, employees, "Hey, what? What? What's a what's a good game for beginners?" As well, uh, beginners or uh, you know, the most enjoyment. Uh, I usually point, uh, you know, the luck jack. The slots are are pretty uh, straightforward, but. Uh, you know, if you're really looking for a thrill, I suggest going to bet on the doopies. Thank you. And I give him a couple of credits. R2, it's your first time. What do you want to do, buddy? I I once uh I once loved a slot machine. So I'll so I'll <laughs> end it up uh, pretty badly. So what is this we'll Futurama? Oh, damn it. <laughs> He's just bender. in love with a slot machine. <laughs> Yeah, I'll I'll go with the doopies. It's a whole new head cannon for me now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you head towards this large crowd with all these screens uh, before you, and uh, there's even some tables where they have like this hologram uh, image of the racetrack and the hologram versions of these things uh, rushing around the track, uh, just people cheering and and. Uh, ranting on and on uh, towards these things. Uh, you see a, a section where you essentially can go up and, and place your bets and whatnot uh, as there's the attendants there waiting to take uh, your wagers. Okay, I don't know what to do. How, do, <laughs> how does this work? So uh, you step up and uh, get some information, and the attendant tells you that, uh, well, we each race, we have uh, four doopies that will uh, race around the track uh, three times. Uh, you can bet on any one of the, uh, one of the racers, and uh, if they win, you win. 
It's pretty simple as that. 25% chance of winning. Not that great. But let's do it. <laughs> okay, what are, what are the dupies that are on the dupe line today? On the dupe line. <laughs> there it is. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, one second. So there's uh, the four of them, and he uh, he calls out and he says, uh, "Well, we have uh, our favorite today, uh, Crix. Crix is two to one. We have." Oh, come on. Rolls. There we go. All right. We've got uh, Dapper at um, four to one. Uh, we have uh, Tom. <laughs> Seven to one, and lastly, uh, Speedy coming in at uh, six to one. God, I'm I'm just drawn to Tom. Five hundred credits on Tom. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'm back in that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and place uh, in chat. Go ahead. Let me know what your wager is. Okay. So, as someone who hasn't done a whole lot of gambling in his actual life, uh, is it likely win to lose, or what's the what's the numbers mean? So, the lower the odds, the the higher chance they have to win. Okay, so two to one would be favorite. the best. Yes. Yes. Uh, so two to one, bet a hundred, win two, kind of a thing. Right. Okay. Um. Shit. Don't bet on time, you're a fool. All in, Kate, all in. <laughs> I'm not betting... <laughs> I'm not betting 16,000 <laughs> credits on a fucking... <laughs> Doofy? No. All right, so uh, how this works is that they will uh, step up and uh, race around the track. There are three laps. Uh, each lap will be a D4 for that racer. And then at the end of it, they will add their odds number. And then the t whoever has the lowest total is the winner of the race. So Okay, so Crix will add a two, Dapper adds a four kind of a thing? Yes, yep. And then um, I will do these left to right <laughs> in the order I posted. So Crix will get the first number, Dapper, Tom, Speedy, because I'm going to roll 44s at a time. So... You guys uh, place your wagers, get ready. Uh, the dupies line up, and uh, the starting pistol goes off, and the first lap goes around. And uh, Crix, the favorite, is off to uh, an initial start as it goes around. Uh, Tom is dragging, <laughs> not looking good. Yeah, uh, four, come on. Come around to lap number two. And uh, ooh, definitely uh, oh, some people slowed yeah! up and uh, Speedy seemed to pick up here and uh, gain. Ooh, ooh, uh, ooh, actually, ooh. looks like I think Speedy took the lead here. Coming into the final lap, final turn. And we're going to have... No! Uh, with, uh, on the third lap, it looks like uh, Dapper's going to catch up. So Crix comes out with 10. Yeah. Uh, we've got... Uh, 12 on the next one, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 18, and then the last one, uh, 15. All right, uh. so uh, the winner is going to be uh, Crix. Crix hey. is able to pull it off at the end. So uh, Crix, let's see, look like Rick's. So yeah, you uh, earn two thousand credits. That includes what you, right. you know, that. But yeah, 
Nice. Damn. Well done. You can't just do you can't just do one or two. We have to we have to do a couple. Really, also, really it makes Todd crazy. come up with four more names. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do another race. <laughs> All right, so the next racers come up, and uh, your favorite today is Crax at two to one. You've got wow. Dipper at uh... now what? Flemmy, Flemmy. Six to one. Uh, you have uh, Tom was uh, kicked out, so Flemmy does show up at eight to one. And... Oh no, Flemmy. And then not we the finally bird. have a uh ooh. <laughs> nine out of speedo, nine out of ten. Speedo comes out with a nine. Speedo. Alright. Is he branded? Is his name Speedo? Is he sponsored by <laughs> I just uh, turned off my uh, scroll bar somehow. <clears throat> All, right. All in, Kate. Again, I'm not betting 16,000 credits on a doobie. <laughs> it's not happening. You keep telling yourself that. <laughs> All right, uh, so we got a bet uh, from K, Dab, Remy. Anyone else? R two. Oh, Ooh, playing a double. Bets. All right. So they line up to the starting line. Pistol goes off. Left to right here. Lap one. And they're off to a pretty even start. Speedo is. Uh, you gotta be kidding. Dragon just a little behind. Uh, come around to lap number two. They go off. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Speedo catches up. Uh, Cracks actually, you know, slows down quite a bit uh, and struggles here. Flemmy uh, and Speedo, they're neck and neck. Coming around to the last lap. Uh, and uh, oh, yeah, we'll see how we do. So Cracks is... A nine on cracks. We've got a fourteen on eight. dipper. Yep. And then oh. uh five, six and eight, fourteen, and then fourteen. So uh cracks again pulls it off. Able to uh take it home. So Rick's uh and R so R2 basically a wash. Yeah. Uh, and Rick's oh, it, you earn a thousand good. credits. Oh, because he did 500 on two different? Yeah. Well, let's Wait. see. You yeah, have one like from one? Cracks? Cracks. You're so so Cricks and betting. Cracks. <laughs> Tanford Brothers. Yep. Wonderful. So 500 would win 1,000 bet, 1,500 total? Yeah. Okay. So I guess R2 would win a little bit. Maybe we should find the game that uh, isn't completely up to chance. Yeah, might be for the best. Maybe a little bit of skill. <laughs> hey, maybe R two can hack the slot machines with his slicing skills. I was exactly you know, that. I don't think you should say that shit out loud in a in a <laughs> in a casino on a core world. <clears throat> So as you uh, finish up with your yeah. second race, uh, looking about for maybe something else to do, uh, you do receive a message on your comms. A Wait, notice who? of a message. Me? Or? Uh, any of you. All of you. Okay. All at the same time. Whoa. <laughs> That's never good. <laughs> Hello? Look at it. So it just simply uh, is, is you know, essentially Star Wars text message and sa uh, says, uh, please Wars get eight. in touch when you can. Uh, I have a job for you. Signed, Mika. Hey, boss. There it is. 
Let's go to a data uh, comm terminal, whatever, in the casino. Go make a collect call. <laughs> of course, a collect call. <laughs> yeah, let me can pay for it. I mean, I'm sure they have some sort of, like, comms terminal for their fancy guests. They do, yes. So we make a call. All right. Uh, to Assuming you want to find a private comm call. Yeah. Okay. So you are able to do so, and uh, you, you dial in to Mika, and uh, the hollow vid in front of you flickers, and the large green face uh, of Mika the Hut uh, stands before before you. Uh, and he, uh, his voice seems a little bit uh, stronger and booming uh, than when you last saw him, more confident. But he still does you all the honor of speaking in basic. My friends, I have need of your services, he says uh, once again. I have an extremely valuable cargo that needs to be shipped to the palace of Lungru the Hut on Jidruda. It is a gift meant to seal a bargain between our two clans. I know that you and Lungru have not gotten along before, but you are my agents now, and he will not dare lift a hand against you. In fact, should you wish to speak to Lungru with impunity about the trouble he caused you in the past, this would be an excellent opportunity. Of course, I shall see that see you well compensated for your time and efforts. Please come back to Narshada and gather your cargo and payment in advance. And with that, the message ends with a click. Well, cool. I'm trying to remember who who that guy was. The Bomu clan guy? No, oh, that's who that you're asking Lungru? Yeah. Yeah, Lungru, yeah. Lungru is... I've got to make sure it is, but I think it's... Um, where is it at? Oh, I was oh. thinking Perella. Uh, yeah, so Lungru is just one of the other huts that you would have, um, you know, likely maybe rubbed elbows a little bit at... Um, okay. Uh, was it the, hunting, the dinner party. Yeah. hunter guy? Nope, that's Perella. Okay, never mind. So Lungru... Um, Lungru... Had uh, I think he had the yeah the Syrian guards with him. Oh, okay. Yeah, from Syria. Yeah. Um, and nice, yeah, it's just kind of yeti mundi guys. So. <laughs> yeah. From Syria. Right. <laughs> Does it seem like we need to uh, head out uh, quickly from the message? Um, you know, you guys are, are, you know, at least probably a couple days from Narshada, so. Do you guys want to do a little more gambling, call it a night, get a hotel here, and uh, head out in the morning, well rested? That seems like a good yeah, idea. Yeah. Like a plan. Let's order some drinks and do some gambling. Yeah. Something a little bit the... more skill-based, like uh, slots. Yeah, <laughs> I'll drunk, I'll drunk, I'll drunk text Angela Crin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll love that. She'd very much appreciate it. I think. Yeah, she seems the type. What are you gonna What are you gonna text her? W Y D. Yeah, what? <laughs> you up? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's day on this planet. It's noon. Wait, can you wait? No, can you can you actually send her a a, a calm message just to see what happens? Oh God! Pretty I mean, it, what else is there to no lose for us, right? <laughs> oh my God! Check in and see how that tempest thing's going. Perfect. Just wanted to be sure everything was fine. You know, um, yeah. left it pretty dicey, so just wanted to check in. Wanna make sure you're okay. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. You know, you just took out a black sun cell to see what you're up to. <laughs> sends a sends a picture of him flexing accidentally. Oh no, sorry that that wasn't supposed to go there. <laughs> to, you're not my mom. Hey, you say that with such uh with such ease. Did you? Is that how you got your wife, bud? <laughs> um, maybe. It, <laughs> no, no, it's not. 
it's not that great a story actually okay all right unfortunately okay. all right ricks are you uh are you sending a message to angela so you guys uh enjoy uh a little bit more gambling uh this evening have some drinks uh do find a place to uh crash for the evening uh to rest up um after your adventures here on Corellia uh, to take off uh, first thing in the morning to head back to Narshada to pick back up with Mika and find out about uh, his latest task for you. That is uh, where we end tonight. Is there any chance awesome. that we can cover like the rest of the night and uh, like the next morning in downtime? As far as, I mean, like, as yeah, far but... as, like, I mean, Kate did just find out that his parents died literally right after the, like, he left for the Jedi Temple, so. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. So... Oh, like, I just want to say, like, we play out the rest of the night talking yeah. and drinking oh, yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, our... yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. So. Definitely. Yeah. So we'll see you guys yeah, in so... RP chat, okay. and then, uh, um, also... I almost forgot. You guys have all hit level 10. Oh, whoa, wait. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, level 10. A lot of homework. Level That's amazing. 10. So we are, uh, yep. I probably should have leveled up after the dragon, uh, after that break, but whatever. So uh, I just figured whatever. We'll skip to 10 here as we come into uh, the final act of Tempest Feud. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Cade, hey, while we're while we're still on Corellia, before we leave, you may want to think about your sister. And I'm not just you know messing with you now. Before we leave no, Corellia, that's, that's in my plan. Yeah. Okay. That's why All I right. asked. All right. Good game, guys. Yep. Good stuff, guys. Yeah. See you in RP, and then we'll see you back in two weeks. Let me know questions on leveling up. But otherwise, we'll see you guys. Uh, yeah, in a couple weeks. Uh, yeah. Good. Thank you. All right. Cool. cool. Later's. Thank you.